Kia ora. This is Christina Hoppner from Catalyst and I'm the project lead for Mahara. Today I'm very excited to introduce you to Mahara 1804, the April 2018 release of the open source ePortfolio platform Mahara. I would like to showcase some of the new features of this new version. We are pleased to make them all available to you and would like to thank all our contributors. That is not only the developers who coded these new features and changes, but also everybody else who's been involved in making them a reality. Our sponsors, UX designers, translators, graphic designers, testers, front-end developers, system administrators, information security researchers, and many others who've supported the community contributors and also the Mahara core team at Catalyst along our journey on uh, to this latest release. One of the areas that saw most new features implemented this time around is privacy. We created several new features to be compliant with the GDPR, the European Union's new general data protection regulation. Um, that is coming into effect on the 25th of May in 2018. If your organization is affected by this new regulation, you can turn on strict privacy mode in Mahara in order to require everybody to consent to the terms and conditions and also the privacy statement. Since not every institution may require that, we made it an option in Mahara. And in some cases, especially if you work with younger students, you may want to require parents to sign uh, statements. But if you have this statement, um, this feature turned on, everybody will be required to consent to the privacy statement and terms and conditions in order to use their account on Mahara. And um, that means also that when things change, they will be required to consent to them. So here I'm logging in as a um, student and um, the institution has just required the privacy change and um, added something to their privacy statement. So now I can read it and consent to it. Previous statements that I may have already consented to are displayed as well and I can see when I consented to them. Later on, once I'm in my account, I can always go back and um, revoke my consent if I don't agree with um, any statements anymore. And that will trigger a notification to an administrator who can then get in touch with me in order to discuss this, um, while in the meantime, I'm suspended of using my account. Now, um, it is important for the GDPR that um, transparency is given and therefore we implemented a his version history of uh, terms and conditions and also the privacy statement so that it is very clear who wrote which version and when it was created so that um, it can be followed up. What you do need to be careful about is that when you change a version, you always change the current one. Um, and when you make a change and save your version, everybody who needs to agree to it or consent to it is directly asked to consent to that change once they log in again or once they go back to the site if they are already logged in. So even tiny changes like spelling mistakes do require you to save a new version and therefore be careful and um, make all the changes beforehand in order to upload the latest version without having to make any changes to that online. It is also possible to report over these consents, namely in the reporting area. There you'll find the report type legal consent and can then decide which columns you want to display in your report and see 
who consented to which agreement at what point. In some cases, there needs, needs to be an institutional agreement. In other cases, there doesn't have to be one. And when you click on one of these agreements, you are being taken directly to the page which says what this person consented to at what point, so to which version of the privacy statement or terms and conditions they consented to. The site administrator who created any of the statements um, automatically accepts them, but everybody else needs to consent to them themselves. And of course, institution administrators can also create uh, their own privacy statements and terms and conditions. Another area of the GDPR is the right to be forgotten. And that means that it shall be possible for anybody to delete their account. Now, we've had the account deletion possibility in Mahara already. Um, but only for those that self-registered and had the internal authentication method. Now everybody also with an external authentication method can delete their account. Since uh, people can use their Mahara account as part of a degree or other formal education program, we implemented the possibility for institutions to review the account deletion so that they can um, just double check it before accounts are deleted and it is very difficult to get them back. So the site administrator can require that accounts are reviewed before deletion or if the site administrator leaves that up to the institutions, they can change that in the institution setting. And so if the review of accounts is turned on, then as a user, I can't directly delete my account, but I need um, to provide a reason. And then the request is sent to the administrator for that institution or if there's no institution to the site. And then that administrator or the site administrator can deal with that, um, namely by going to the administration area and then looking into the pending deletions going to the institution and then seeing who requested um, the deletion and either approve it or deny it. In this case, I'd like to talk a little bit longer with Carla and deny the request. Or I can simply approve it and then the account is automatically deleted and all personal account being removed. Content that was created in groups um, on the institution level or the site level is still available though. Another new feature that makes life easier for people is that there is now a password policy with a password strength indicator. So at the moment I'm required 10 characters. So the password strength indicator shows me how well my password is constructed so that I can follow the password policy. Site administrators can change the site, um, can change the password policy and um, set them to what they require at minimum. So at minimum, we have eight characters and then the lowest setting would be upper and lower case letters. To make it more secure, we can include numbers and to be even more secure can include symbols. And the numbers here in the drop down menu, they are the minimum characters. So people can also, of course, have longer passwords than that. But we don't really want to go below eight characters because um, those passwords can be cracked quite easily. Otherwise, if it is lower than that. So now let's take a look at some of the portfolio features. Um, these were very administrative or legal features that we've seen so far, but they are very important to protect uh, user accounts, uh, privacy, and also have make accounts secure. But we've also, of course also implemented some features that benefit the portfolio work. And so the first one is one that has been requested for many, many years. 
namely the rotation of images. And we finally found a solution that um, is a possibility there. Another new feature is that you can link to personal portfolio pages directly from other pages. So if we go to a portfolio page and include a text block, for example, there you can link to another page entirely without needing to know the URL of this page as you needed in the past. So you can simply go to the link icon and then from the link list, pick the portfolio page that you are interested in and the URL to it will be included automatically to it. Please do be aware though that page permissions still come into effect. And so if that page is not available to the person viewing this, this portfolio here, then they would still not be able to see it. We've also implemented a change for smart evidence, which makes it possible to make it, yeah, have it more configurable really, in order to decide which assessment statuses should be displayed in a smart evidence framework overview page. So you can decide either just to show the meet the standards one or ready for assessment or any of the other standards um, to receive a summary over how many of these uh, assessments the student in question has already achieved. So if we go to a smart evidence collection, we now see that we have the statuses here displayed and then in the summary, they, they are shown with how many elements there already are. We also have implemented contextual help for the user manual, which I'm really excited about because it makes the user manual more accessible. And so if you click the link in the bottom of a page, you are being taken directly to the user manual and that area that you requested. The same thing happens when you edit a page and you want to have more information on the blocks, you can go to the block help and are taken to the area in the user manual that talks about the blocks in order to have um, their, this description displayed. Another new feature that we implemented is a new calendar widget, um, which makes it re more modern in order to, and therefore also more easily selectable and um, workable on smart devices in particular, because we also have an easier time picker that we can use in order to choose a particular time, for example, for and until which or from when a portfolio shall be available. Now, a lot of portfolios can be, can be quite large. And if you're at a big institution, you might run into st storage problems and storage is going to cost a lot. Well, that's where the cloud can come in. And Mahara supports object storage for files that are being uploaded. And that excludes uh, generated thumbnails, but every other file can be moved to object storage. And currently, this plugin um, is available for Amazon Web Services S3 and also Microsoft Azure's Blob Storage. While you still need to install two plugins, one the ObjectFS one and also then one specifically for the cloud provider that you're using, the underlying infrastructure that supports the use of these plugins is available in Mahara 18.04 therefore helping you also to reduce costs in your operation of your Mahara site. We've implemented many, many more features than the ones that I could just showcase um, here in this uh, video. And please feel free to look at all of them 
and also all the bug fixes that we have created because there are many again making this version of course the best uh, so far of Mahara because we are always looking to improve the site and uh, give you new features to make your portfolio work easier and also have easier ways of working with Mahara. All the user-facing features are documented in the Mahara 1804 user manual that is available to you under manual.mahara.org where you have the highlighted new features um, all summarized in the What's New in Mahara 1804 section and then all the other features are always um, indicated in the manual with the little bot icon and the 1804 flag. You can get to that to each of these new features very easily through the index and then going to new in Mahara 1804 where you can then click the individual index entries and are taken to the specific portfolio pages where you can read up more information about them. Now, if you're interested in working with this new version of Mahara, feel free to download it um, either from Launchpad or uh, connect to our Git repository and get the latest code there in order to install it for yourself or your institution and get started with it. And we also look forward to your feedback of this new version and also if you have any ideas for new features in Mahara or how to change certain features in Mahara, please put the information either on our back tracker or get in touch with me via christina at uh, mahara.org or um, discuss them in the community so that you know if others are interested in them as well.